Thank you. And with that, I think I would like to introduce Professor Lester Grinspoon, recently retired from Harvard Medical School. Dr. Grinspoon. Thank you. Well, it's the advice the police gave to, uh, to Keith and Rick, uh, you're old enough to uh, know better. Uh, uh, if it applied to them, it certainly shouldn't have applied to me because I'm a little older than they are. But in fact, um, I first uh, began to, uh, to look at marijuana as a, as, a pro as a professor of psychiatry at the Harvard Medical School in 1967, when, because my book on schizophrenia was going to be delayed because the two junior authors were two months late and I had some unscheduled time, I, went to, I wanted to do something about all these young people who were using this terribly dangerous drug, and perhaps if I could write a reasonably objective statement about this and get it published in a vehicle uh, which they would uh, be interested in, uh, maybe I could do something about it. Much to my astonishment, here I was trained in science and medicine and had to discover that I had been brainwashed like just about every other American. Um, I went on to write a book uh, called Marijuana Reconsidered, in which at the end I predicted uh, that I had, uh, uh, once people really, as they would certainly within 10 years, <coughs> understood how relatively harmless this substance was, these laws would be gone and we'd be free to use this. Now, I didn't use marijuana when I, I, as I studied it, I, preparing that book, I, uh, I decided not only is it not very harmful at all relative to other drugs. I mean, if you look at even drugs in the U.S. pharmacopoeia that get all this scrutiny, marijuana has had more scrutiny than any one of them. Uh, and there are no recalls on marijuana. Um, but I thought I shouldn't, I'm going to have to resist. I mean, it sounds like an interesting thing, and I wanted to do it, but I felt I had to resist because I anticipated correctly that I would be uh, called before committees and courts, doctor, have you ever used marijuana? And I, uh, it wasn't until uh, uh, two years later when I was before a committee, in fact, here in Massachusetts, when a senator who had been uh, very hostile in his questioning of me said, Doctor, do you, you use marijuana? And I said to him, well, let me ask you a question. If I answer that affirmatively, will it make me a more or less credible witness? He stood up and said, you are being uh, contemptuous, or some, some uh, word like that, and walked out of the hearings. I went home to my wife and said, look, the time has come enough of this, and I've been smoking marijuana for 44 years now and agree with Professor Nesson, I think it's a tremendous blessing. I first approached it from the point of view of, you know, I was sure it was unsafe. Once I was convinced that it was safe and satisfied my curiosity about it, it took me a number of years to realize what a remarkable substance it was. Not only because it was among the least toxic substances that we know as drugs, anywhere in the U.S. pharmacopoeia or outside of it, but also because uh, it was increasingly attracting my attention as medicine. And in fact, I, I published this in 1997, a, a book on medical marijuana. I have also concluded that there's, th there's a third reason. I mean, there's recreation, there's medicine, and there's what I call uh, enhancement. Uh, it, it enhances a number of things, uh, and I won't go into them now, I just have a few minutes, but uh, I'm oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, thank my no, wife, right, Lester, I was just joking. <laughs> as my wife says, Lester, I don't want you talking about our sex life. <laughs> <laughs> she better not see these. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> But at any rate, uh, and, and it, it, it astonishes me that we can't get around this prohibition. It's like 
something sacred about it. You can't question it. You can't bring any factual data, any data to it, or what have you. At any rate, I am delighted to uh, play a part in this effort uh, with these two courageous smokers who, uh, who want to test this uh, thing. By, and I have written an affidavit with much help from Paul Armentino. Armentino? Armentino. Armentino. I know you said that right. And Mitch Earlywine. And, uh, uh, and now I'm, we're going to go ahead with it. I'm also going to do something uh, to help the court to see that it's not just something for fun. But as a medicine, it is becoming increasingly recognized, increasingly important, and it is absolutely outrageous that we should make people, let alone that we should deny people like, like us our liberty to use it, but to deny patients who really need it and who suffer as a consequence of not being able to get it, and if they do get it, they have to get it illegally and deal with the anxiety. So I'm, we're going to add an affidavit on that. But uh, I'm delighted to contribute to uh, this enterprise.